So now we'll look at the mechanism for the SN2 reaction. Now the SN2 reaction happens in a single step via a crowded transition state. Now remember, a transition state is something that's formed en route, but we cannot spectroscopically observe it. It means it's a proposed structure based on where we start and where we end. It's the same way as if you were driving to the grocery store. If you told me your address and the address of the grocery store, I could propose the route that you took, but I couldn't know for sure because I wasn't able to observe it. That's a transition state. Now we're going to go through the same activity over here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to identify that leaving group. Here it is. It's the iodine. And I have a bond dipole here between the carbon and the iodine, making the carbon here electrophilic. The nucleophile is going to be the sulfur. And you'll notice that it's carrying a negative charge and it's nucleophilic because it has that lone pair. Everything's going to happen in a single step here, which is to say that the sulfur will attack the carbon. And when I make a bond to a carbon, I have to break a bond to a carbon, the I minus will depart. I make a transition state, which is indicated to me with this little double dagger that says that something's a transition state. Now I want to draw your attention to something, and that's these dotted lines here. What these dotted lines mean is we have partially formed bonds. In this transition state, we've partially formed the new bond between the sulfur and the carbon, and partially broken the old bond between the carbon and the iodine. You will notice that carbon, which is a small atom, is being asked to accommodate a lot of atoms here, both the nucleophile and the leaving group, as well as everything else it was bonded to at the start. This is why the SN2 reaction is favored by non-crowded carbons, because of this really crowded transition state. Here, we've used exclusively hydrogen for the methyl carbon, which is the one that proceeds the fastest in this reaction. I then proceed to my final product. Here is that leaving group having departed and the new sulfur carbon bond. And everything occurred in a single step. So recall that transition state is something that is not spectroscopically observed, but we can propose en route. If you are to make a chiral product in the SN2 reaction, you will get a single product with inversion of configuration, which is to say that if you started as R, you would go to S. And if you started as S, you would go to R. You would get the one product. And if we contrast this to the SN1 reaction, we got a racemic mixture of two products if the products were chiral. So now we're starting to see the importance of how we can separate the two. So to recap, the SN2 reaction occurs in a single step where the nucleophile attacks the electrophile and the leaving group departs all at once via this crowded transition state. Should we make a chiral product, we only get one and we get it with inversion of configuration. If I started R, I make S. If I started S, I make R. This is different than the SN1 reaction, where we attack the carbocation across two steps. And if we were to make something chiral, we get two products in a racemic mixture.